Donald Trump has frequently played on fear of immigrants as part of his platform. Because we have millions and millions of people, and they came from prisons and jails, mental institutions, and insane asylums. And then you have terrorists, and then you have drugs, and then you have human traffickers, and they're coming over at levels never seen before. At his rallies and the Republican National Convention, signs like this, calling for mass deportations now, were everywhere. While Trump and his allies have outlined how they plan to curb the process of admitting new migrants, on multiple occasions he's also promised to conduct sweeping immigration raids of people already in the states. During his first term, his target was 8 million people. We're going to get rid of the bad ones because we have some really bad ones in here right now. And you know that gang members in L.A. are 100 percent illegal immigrants. They're going to be gone and they're going to be gone fast. And they're not going to be in our prisons for us to take care of them. However, he's now claiming he wants to deport anywhere from 15 to 20 million undocumented people from the United States. It is only common sense that when I'm reelected, we will begin and we have no choice. The largest deportation operation in American history. We have not. This target is higher than even the most wildly exaggerated estimates of the total number of undocumented people in the U.S., which means that he will also inevitably throw out legal residents and citizens who happen to look like they're undocumented, a.k.a. have the wrong skin color, which suggests he doesn't seem to care if he does. But what would his deportation operation even look like? To put it into perspective, Imagine if we deported the entire populations of New York City, Los Angeles, Chicago, and Pittsburgh. That's 15 million people, and it would take a lot of manpower to do it. But don't worry. Trump advisor and chief immigration ghoul Stephen Miller has a plan to get all this done. Then in terms of personnel, you go to the red state governors and you say, give us your National Guard. We will deputize them as immigration enforcement officers. So you have experienced ICE veterans who are leading the operations, and then you scale up the personnel by bringing in both other federal law enforcement officers, you know, think DEA, ATF, et cetera, and then the National Guardsmen. And then we're, we're the ones to provide them state and local sheriffs as well, too. That's the basic idea logistically for how you're able to carry out a deportation operation at that monumental magnitude. Investigative journalist Radley Balco estimates that if we assume the current staffing and budget would need to expand at scale, with the number of removals, Trump would need 530,000 agents to meet his goal. If Trump were able to call on every member of the Army National Guard, then tasked all 20,000 ICE, 21,000 Border Patrol, 37,000 FBI, 5,000 DEA, 2,600 ATF, and 10,000 Homeland Security Investigations agents with rounding up undocumented immigrants full-time, he would still be short of what he needs. Beyond the personnel, what are we going to do with those 15 million people? We've got to handle buses and airplanes for transport, food and shelter at numerous facilities across the country, plus materials for processing and admin work. Remember, right now, we spend about $165 a day on each individual immigrant detained, and even more for families. The average deportation process can take anywhere from weeks to years, and the backlog is already at 3 million cases. Despite this, Trump and Miller don't spend a lot of time explaining their plan to fund our immigration courts, which would likely not just grind to a halt, but collapse. And that might be the point. The bigger the backlog, the bigger the crisis seems, the more Trump, armed with new immunity powers from the Supreme Court, is given leeway to push the boundaries of what is acceptable. I'll solve the border problems within 24 hours of taking office. On top of increasing the backlog, Trump's plan would likely result in intense surges in inflation, increasing costs of groceries, child and elder care, and new home construction. It would co-opt state, local, and federal law enforcement powers, taking them away from solving and deterring real crimes, likely driving the crime rate to actually increase. It would mean teams of deportation forces going door to door or just into public spaces, ripping people away from their homes, jobs, and families, and throwing them into cramped, likely neglected facilities while they wait to get loaded up into buses or planes and be shipped off. And as Stephen Miller has stated, there's going to be renewed attempts to conduct raids that don't just target individuals, but rather 
whole groups they deem suspicious, a fear of more than half of U.S. Latinos. It would mean communities decimated and disappeared, and not just those made up of immigrants. Zero out of ten, no good, very bad idea.